Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me in my shop. It's been a couple of days since I posted a video, but uh, I've been in here uh, yesterday and the day before. Yesterday I was in here on and off all through the day messing around with this radio, trying to find out why one band is so weak when all the rest seem pretty strong. That's a 19 meter band. Uh, you know, hours of stuff going on in here picking my way through this radio, studying this schematic uh, till there's hardly a brain cell that isn't crying uh, in my head. So, but I did reach a conclusion. The conclusion is the radio is working the way it is supposed to work. This is it. This is what it does. It doesn't do any better than what's going on in it right now. So I'm going to explain how I reached this conclusion. Is, is it really true? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's my conclusion. I'm sticking with it right now. And I'm going to move on to dealing with the magic eye. Magic eye here. So, uh, you know what? And uh, maybe I'm going to start by turning on the radio, in fact. And that's going to allow me to demonstrate a couple of things here. Let's do that. Let's do that. Last thing I did with this radio was come in here last night in the evening, hook it up to an outdoor antenna. It's hooked up to it right now. And mess around on the short wave bands. Uh, the problem with doing that these days is the sun's output is low, the uh, charge in our uh, atmosphere is low, and the result is shortwave radio is low, <laughs> really low. Man, I remember, here we go, I remember back in the day, back in the 70s, when I would take a shortwave radio, I'm thinking of my Hammerland. I can spin the dial and just let her rip. And what you'd hear coming out of the speaker would be blah, 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 as, the, as you went past all kinds of stations and signals. I mean, it was jammed. Today, you do that same thing, what do you hear? Psst, psst. <laughs> if you're lucky. Boy, oh boy. So, consequently, it's really weird working on shortwave radios in a world where there's not much to hear. So, rather than hear more from my voice, so we're starting on the B band here. I'm just going to run through them really quick, and I'm going to make a point about the 19 meter band. So, I'm going to turn up the volume there. I'm going to leave the volume as it is now. I'm just going to go through the radio. So, this is the B band. It's listening to. It's listening to a fair bit of short wave here, around 6 megahertz. The B band is not a band spread band. It, it covers quite a few megahertz from, from here to there. The band spread bands on this radio work a little differently than these other ones, uh, which I'm going to show you in a bit. Okay, nothing happening there. Now we're on the 31 meter band. If you hear the general noise level, that's what I want you to pick up on. We're now on the 25 meter band. Did you hear it get a little quieter? Hmm. Whip through. I might pick some. There we are. I don't want to turn this up. Uh, it's going to negate my test here, but you see it's working. Go one more band. This is the quiet 19 meter band. You hear it got even quieter? Listen. You hear the hiss? Oh, well, it's almost the same. Now. And there we are. <laughs> the demonstration goes wild as the teacher becomes the student. Yes, there was an oscillation there. So, Try again. 31 meter, lots of hiss. 25 less, 19 even less. This 19 less thing is what I interpreted as 19 meter band not working properly. But now you can see that, in fact, there's something going on with the 25. And that's the B band again, which is wired 
quite differently in the front end from these band spread bands. Okay, what's this all about? Jim, what are you showing? We're going to have to jump on the schematic here and take a look at it for me to explain more. So let's do that. Okay, so let me uh, get, get rid of the sound here from the radio. There. I'll just switch it to the 19 meter band. It's quiet. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the schematic. We're gonna study up this area right in here. So let me zoom in on it. Okay. So this area right here, um, what I discovered is that the spread bands, the ones where uh, this one, 19 meter, 25 meter, 31 meter, look how they're arranged. They're all tabs off of a coil. And here is the primary for that. That's separate from this group down here, which is a different form. It's a different form. These are not on the same uh, form. Notice these ones are numbered. One, two, three. That's because there's a diagram for that over here where they're numbered again. One, two, three. See what it says? It says band B and this is confusing how they put this. This really means for band B and for the 16 to 13 meter band they should maybe put a comma here not a dash. That might have been a little more explanatory. Okay, let's go back again. So, so the point there is that although on the schematic it looks like this is one uniform coil, maybe all affecting each other, it's not. It's two. One here and one here. Notice each one has a primary. Here's the primary coil. This has two secondaries for band B and for band 16 to 13 meters. And this one, one primary and one secondary tap. For these three. This is a really big deal. It's a real big difference here in how these are operating. So, um, without getting into the de and, and this, this, this capacitor is only switched in during certain band operations. When you operate these three bands, this is not connected. And you can see the wire leads here from it here. At this point, with this setting, which incidentally is the push button setting right now, that's where this is shown, you can see that this component here isn't even connected. That floored me. I have never ever realized that a radio might switch on and off one of the sections of the uh, tuning capacitor. I, I just never imagined that, but there you are. Okay, so why, why now do we get a strong 31 meter band, a medium 25 meter band, and a weak 19 meter band. And I'm pointing right at the reason, right here. This is my conclusion, that this radio, like all radios, is not perfect. There were some design accommodations made in it, uh, probably under pressure of cost, and they gave up a little bit of performance right here what's going on here. I'm going to look at this in the radio when I'm finished explaining this. And, and again, is this really true what I'm going to tell you? I don't know. This is just what I've come to conclude. So this is a transformer here. And you can look at the turns ratio easily. You can say, okay, the primary has so many turns, the secondary has, well, it depends which band you're on. If you pick the 19 meter band, you have the least number of turns in the secondary. If you pick the 31 meter band, you're hooking up to this wire, you've picked many, many more turns in this coil. So you have more turns in the secondary of a transformer. Now, there's other issues with these things, aside from just turns ratio, there's coupling factors and things like that, that, uh, that you know, it, what, what I've come to conclude is in these old radios, one of the most highly engineered specifically designed parts that the uh, design engineers must have worked very hard on are these coils these coils 
represent a heck of a lot of engineering. That's what I think, anyway. You know, on all these radios, the coils are very specific to the radios. The rest of the parts, capacitors, and stuff like that, not so much so. But these things, this is almost like this is what makes this radio. These coils here, how they've designed. So, okay, enough ranting. So what's going on? So, it's quite simple in my mind then. The more secondary, the stronger the signal reaching the grid. 19 meter band, just a few turns. 31 meter band, you got this whole thing working for you. You're just going to get more energy reaching the grid. It's a design flaw, or a design, not really a flaw, uh, something they accepted in the design of these radios. See, like these are the band spread ones. So these have to be handled very differently in terms of the uh, resonance, the Q, all this kind of stuff. Happen very differently from these bands, which are not spread. This is not spread, this is not spread. And, and where is band A anyway? Well, band A is working against this coil, I believe. I believe that's what's going on. So this is actually the trimmer. Whoop, whoop, this. Hey, this is the trimmer. Whoop, take it all back. I won't take it all back, take a little bit back. These coils are working for all these bands. The A band is relying on this coil, I believe. Okay, won't go into this any, any longer now. That's my conclusion. The radio is simply always going to be quieter. Now, all these radios come with a fantastic feature. It's a manual compensator for weakness in the radio. So if one of the areas of the radio is a little weak, there's a way the operator can compensate for that weakness, and it's called the volume control. So you just turn the volume up a little higher, and any weakness here relative you know to the other bands is magically eliminated so that's why i'm moving on at this point but in the course of doing all this i discovered the 19 meter band oscillates oh no no not another problem yeah another problem so i'm going to ignore that because my brain is burned out on this area of the radio i'm going to go fiddle around with the magic eye why don't we take a look at it here on the schematic before we get into the radio here is the magic eye uh, lots of fantastic uh, websites explain how these guys work exactly, so I'm not going to attempt to do it, but a major component in making the eye work properly, and, and, and the eye in this radio is not working properly, is this resistor right here. Now, the, this resistor, it's not, you know, it's not evident in the schematic here, but most commonly this resistor is tucked right inside the uh, socket for this tube and you can see the resistor is actually connected just between these pins this pin and this pin so why not stick it right inside well one reason is it runs hot because this gets hot from the tube so it runs hot and second I, th I, I guess this guy's a little bit of a hard worker along with that I'm not exactly sure why but for some reason these very often are bad these are bad guys. Now, they don't have to be up here. They can be back in the radio. Uh, they're up here because often these magic eyes are like a add-in unit on a radio. It's almost like a... Uh, it's, it's, it's like adding a voltmeter to a radio. Uh, build the whole radio, get the whole thing working, everything's great. Oh, let's stick a voltmeter on the AVC. Okay, stick it on there. What the heck? That's what this is like. This is like a voltmeter stuck on the ABC line. There's the ABC connection right there. So, great instrument, by the way. If you don't have instruments for testing your radio as you work on it, align it. This guy will do the trick. He's monitoring the ABC voltage. It's a great tool, even though it's not calibrated. You can get a long ways with just the magic guy, but not in this radio. Okay, let's go look at the radio now. Okay. I spent too much time talking. Jim, the radio's on still. Don't forget that fact. So, um, so here's all these fantastic coils in this radio. And you can see a bunch here, a couple here, here and here. What? Where'd the radio go? Wow, that's just the most 
interesting thing right there. I'm waiting for it to come back. Very slowly. Here it comes. Wow, what's happening there? <laughs> it's a whole new thing, whole new thing. going on there and I think it's some weird ABC thing happening I don't know I don't know stay focused but I want to do I do want to show you this coil up here before we move on and the other coils since I was talking so much about them again remembering that the radio is on so when you look at this coil this is the uh, band spread coil for the 19 25 and 31 meter bands so a couple of interesting observations you can make about this coil. It looks like there's two windings. But this bigger winding, the one I was touching with my finger here, is tapped. Now you can see the tap. You can see like pretty much dead center there's a dark spot. The uh, windings are actually going down through a hole in the form and then they come out they come out here. And you can see there's two two wires. See it? There's two Two wires in two of those leads. The third one is a single wire. So those two wires are actually the coil wires being pulled down through the back and coming out and that's the tap point. That's how they've done it. And up above you can see is the primary that very very fine wire there. So fine even with the camera here we really can't see the individual strands. Wow, wouldn't take much to damage that. So this is where the engineering comes in. The engineering is the uh, form diameter, the uh, wire size, the uh, spacing of the wire, if there is any spacing in the wire, there's no spacing in these ones. Spacing between the two coils is absolutely critical. Uh, all this stuff. And you know, back, back when they built this radio, they didn't have supercomputers to analyze you know all the simultaneous equations that might be involved in all this stuff to, to resolve it so you can bet a lot of it was resolved through experimentation and testing in a laboratory setting look at this guy I mean this is really complicated stuff for a coil this is no small deal to come up with all this look at this one this one this one look at that. it's just totally different from the others and you can see th this one here with the three sections and you can tell it's not just wound they're wound in a pattern crisscrossing the wire it's kind of a braided pattern and you know this is about controlling the capacitance in these wire coils so these things are major engineering pieces that frankly we probably don't really look at them with the uh, the kind of respect we should in these radios Some, sometimes you think the capacitors are exciting and, uh, you know, it's really all these coils Fantastic. I'm willing to bet there was a lot of secrets learned in the heads of the people designing these coils. I think, for instance, and secrets they wouldn't share with other designers. I to give them the heads up on their radio. But just, just really simply, see how this is open facing, uh, let's call it facing up open up, 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 all the same, but not these. These are turned the other way, 90 degrees. That's not done by accident. That's probably not done for space reasons either. It's done to reduce the amount of interaction between these coils. How about the location in the radio? These ones are down here. These ones are up here. These ones are over there. They can't get them too much further apart. And in this radio, I don't see too many 
plates uh, isolating things. There's there's no plates, but some radios actually put a, a metal grounded plate in there to try to prevent these coils from seeing each other. You know, extra plate, extra money. Wow, why am I talking so much here today? Uh, yeah, right, okay, we're going to get on with the magic eye. So let's look at the magic eye's operation here first. Um, I can darken things quite enough here. So uh, I'm going to turn the camera. No, that's fine. That's perfectly right. Now I got to find something to tune in here. Uh, what what band was it? There's something. Well, that actually works better than I thought. So let's try the AM AM radio band here. Okay, this is the AM band. No, this is the push buttons. That's the AM band. I'm gonna clean this off first. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to turn it off now so it's a little safer for me as I start poking around a little more in here. Let's let's take a look at the uh, The style of this radio is suicidal for the Magic Eye wires. They come out the back here and they're laid up right against this tube. This is the uh, that's the rectifier tube that runs really hot and it's right up against the wires. It's just cooking them everywhere in here. And guess what? The insulation gives out on these wires. So if you go to do something, you'll be forced replace them so let's just see the condition so occasionally you can see the resistor that's in this socket here hello peanut hello peanut so oh you can see insulation is giving out now you can imagine now if I if I take this out of the grip here yeah just push the door open peanut come on in just give it a push use your nose so see the wires up here are nicely uh, colored at least I think if I cleaned them I, I could see the color and pattern let's go underneath the radio now we'll, we'll see what's underneath there okay, so this is the wires coming up through that hole there's uh, one two three four of them one of them just goes to ground here. So can we can we see the pattern? So orange, black, yellow, black, red, black, and black, black. And the black, black is the one that goes to the ground. Oh, heavens, peanut, you've come in. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. What is the problem, buddy? What is it? What? By the way, if you look at this wire right here, 
this, this one here with a little tiny bit of insulation on it. So that's a green wire. The insulation is all broken off. I find regularly green colored wires. The insulation is so brittle it's, it's gone in a lot of cases. It's gone from there. But uh, no consequence there. Can't help but notice stuff when you look in the back of these radios all the time. Okay, uh, so what are we going to do? So we want to get I'm thinking of replacing these wires all the way from down here where there are four connections up through the hole and up into the back. Up into the back here. And I want to get it right. right? I want to get the right, the correct wire. Now when I take the uh, eye out and mess around with it, uh, I'll be able to see which pin each of these wires is connected to. But look, it's not easy to trace them all the way down. So, uh, I'm think just thinking in my head how to do this. Okay, let's stop thinking. Thinking just gets in the way anyway. Right? I'm well, gonna take this off. I think of maybe the, ouch a hot tube there. Maybe the first thing I'm going to do is put this in my tube tester and just make sure it isn't the tube itself that's uh, causing the effect. Okay, so this bracket is riveted. i got to take the screw right out here. Many, many of these radios, the magic eye is, is worn out. It's not bright. This one's not bright. But as for it functioning properly, I think that's a different issue. Really, I gotta pull that tube out. Okay. Okay, you're gonna feel a pinch. Yeah, I know peanut. He's out there. Hey, I thought, I thought you were coming out. There we are. Now, get this bracket off first. No, pull the tube out. Worry about the bracket after. Pulling the tube by the glass. Shame on me. Ow. These are always hard to get out. Two. That's why the insulation will disappear off these wires from stuff like that. There it is. 6U5. Oh, peanut. Action. Bias must vary shadow. Bias must vary shadow. Well, we know the shadow varies on this tube already. Okay, so it's got six big pins here. Lighting, oh my god, Peanut's standing outside the door just staring back at me. <laughs> Peanut, I'll be there in a minute. So, we're all set here. Nothing special. On we go. Nothing special. Everything's special. So a couple things might happen. This might turn out to be quite bright. Yes. I'm testing a tube right now. Okay. Um, I think it's supposed to light up right now. Yeah, it is lighting up. It's very, very little. It's very hard to see. Let's try this. Okay, you can kind of see it, but from a relative point of view, you can tell the filament is actually blasting through stronger than the green on the top. Okay, let's see if this works. I'm varying it, and it's opening and closing, but it's not very much. It's very little, in fact. And what would happen to these tubes that this wouldn't do much anymore? 
Is that so, Peanut? So we have a uh, we have a, a conundrum here. I think I'm going to put my good 6U5 in here and compare it. Let's do that. Take this one and put it here. Peanut, you're standing ready. <laughs> Second, while I retrieve my good 6U5. There it is. Just make sure, make sure it says 6U5 on it. 6U5, 6G5, it says. 6U5, here you go. How different is this? Okay, here it comes. Now you can see it. It's way brighter. Way brighter. And the eye, the eye movement is the same. It's the very, very same. Good. Glad I did that. Confirms I have a, I have one really good eye. I have one good eye. I have a good eye and a good ear. I have one good eye. Just hang on, Peanut, okay? So the result of that little deal there is uh, um, it's, it's not going to get any brighter. Uh, I think some people boost the B plus to get a little more brightness out of it late in its life, like it is now. And so I don't know if I can do that. And we have to. This is this is this is terrible. This process is terrible. You've got to get down under here. You've got to pull out this plastic piece here. The plastic piece is pushed in with a kind of grip that when you go to extract this you just end up smashing it so uh, so that's why this I'm so hesitant to even do this that's why I keep reviewing the benefit with a weak eye in there already another alternative is real easy just put a little tape on there and move on ultimately if I change all those wires the 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 tube is not going to work any better and the impression I've gotten so far is the resistor in here is probably good you know I think we can test it I think I think I think I think, I think we can test that guy because it's between pins no we cannot we cannot we cannot perform a test on it without exposing it there's no I mean, yes I can just get on pin here and pin there, pin here and pin there. So that would be uh, starting with the heaters, a heater one, one, two. That'd be between pins two and pin four. I should find a million ohms between pins two and four, two and four. When we're looking at it like this, I think pins two and four. So. So let's see, so if this is pin 2, I get all turned around in the socket, that's why I'm doing this. That's pin 2, then we would rotate this this way, 2 and 4. Okay, I've got 2 and 4, 2 and 4, where, where, where's my, where's my own meter? Okay. We're looking for a million ohms between pins two and four. Two and four. Two and 
four. Who? Oh, suddenly, four. Four million ohms. Four million ohms. Four million ohms. We just read between pins two and four. <laughs> two and four. Two and four. Those are the right two pins. I don't use anywhere else I can get that kind of reading anyway. So it really looks like the million has become four million. Can I just simply stick, uh, you know, a million, maybe a, maybe a 1.4 million in parallel with that to get it back to a million and just do it down in the radio? No, 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 because they don't bring the plate wire down into the radio. They, the, the whole idea is put the resistor in the back of the in the uh, socket and you save a wire. Bill, there'll be a little more in your paycheck next week for that idea. Fred, cut back the wire order. Yeah. Was that two Freds? No, it was a Fred and a Bill. So once again, so now I'm facing, I'm facing, I'm facing, facing, facing the fact that there is, looks, there, ah, hmm, looks like a bad resistor in here. And I just had the ugliest time. So if I try to take it out of here, like get at the resistor, change it, while not damaging these wires, I'll save myself some effort. It's my own radio, anyway. So the way I've pulled this out in the past is just brutal. I just go in, I hook it with a hook tool, and just yanky, 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 until, until it's ruined. There's the stop thing. Maybe I can, what if I were to, ooh, what was that? Kind of just kind of snapped there. I could shove something in the back here. I have it come all the way through to the back of this plate and wash it right out, but I'm sure it would just shatter it or smash it up. So there's a little nubbin there that's it's kind of pushed past the nubbin and it gets locked in. I could grind off the nubbin. Let's take a closer look at it. Take a closer look. They got closer. Right out loud. I'm slow to decide to get myself into big trouble here. So there's the nubbin up at the top that I'm talking about. And the uh, plate. I think there'd be another nubbin on the other side. It doesn't seem to be. So it's a one nubbin plate. So what do they do? So they angle it in to get it under under the nubbin there. Or is that a key? Oh, I think that's a key. That's not a nubbin. Uh, there appears to be no nubbins. Let me get more light on it. looking all the way around the perimeter. Yeah, that's a key. That little bump is a key. This looks like it would just come right out. I see nothing holding it in. Especially if I pull maybe in the bottom. Yeah, shake, shake the camera. In the bottom there. <laughs> I'm pointing with the shaky camera. The video techniques just keep coming. Okay, now. I've got my wicked tool here. It went opposite the nubbin. The radio is off. It's even unplugged. And I'm going to try to wedge it up a bit. Ooh, it just broke a piece off. See, that's how easy it goes. That's what's going to happen here. Wonder you might be saying, hey, no, 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 Jim. I know a way of doing that. Well, unfortunately, I don't. And, uh, isn't that horrible? I, I, I just hate doing this kind of thing. 
smashing something up. But I know ultimately it'll be okay. Even if this piece is destroyed completely and gone. I'm wondering how those wires are doing in behind there. Probably not well. Okay, come on out. There it goes. Not bad. It's mostly intact. Thereupon we see what I believe is the resistor under that thing. Okay, close up camera, please. So I'm pretty sure the resistor is right under that insulation there. All these will pop out too now if I push from the back. So it will all lift out. A little hard to do with one hand though. Here they come. Do I really want to do that? Maybe not. <laughs> I have to put them all back right. So let's put them back right now. Okay. Pull a little resistor out of there. Where are you going? No time to lay down on the job here. There he is. There he is, right there. No hiding that from us. Bring on the meter. Let's take and really test this guy for sure here. And be okay, I just got knocked out of my shop there for an hour or so because my computer hard drive was jammed up so that makes the video stop suddenly without me necessarily noticing so what the last thing is on the last piece of video I don't know right now but assumably you saw me take the resistor out of here and the resistor is now sitting right here and we can get a good close look at it it's a teeny tiny guy this is probably one of the reasons why these resistors get into trouble it's pretty pretty tiny there brown black green so let's take a look and see what we get here what do we get okay more than two million what do we get we get we get we get the leads plugged in the wrong spot on this meter that's what we're getting here just one second here there we go okay what do we get Sisters connected, leads in the right spot. We're set to 20 mega ohms, and the number is 4.4 again. So, no question, this guy is cooked. He's cooked into a higher value, and uh, that's four times what it's supposed to be. Uh, yeah, that's that's more than enough to require a replacement and to cause uh, bad behavior in the eye. No, no bright. I, I, I don't think changing this will change the brightness, but let's give it a go. Now my million ohm resistors are a little bigger than this. I don't know if I can kind of fit it in there. Let me get one and we will see. One million please. Here we are here green band, one million, I got a lot of them. I got millions of them. Millions of the millions. Hey, we're having a really cold day here today. That's, you can kind of tell the sun is shining. No, you can't in here. The sun is shining, uh, but it's very cold. Kind of goes together, right? Clear sky. So that would sit right in there. You know, I could do it. Now sometimes what you, you find these resistors actually pushed through the back, sticking out the back here. Um, you know, that's an interesting way of doing it. It, it gets the resistor farther away from the uh, heat. It's not, it's not just the heat of the magic eye tube. It, this is sitting right next to that big rectifier tube cooking too. So the only thing we can do to cool this guy down Stick them right in like that. Have them come out the end. 
Hey, what about those wires? I'm trying to avoid changing all these wires. I don't want to do it. I do not want to do it. So far they've held together except for one. I can re-insulate that one there. So That would be my plan. I'm not trying to cut anything here. Just there. There we go. Everybody back in. Everybody back in. Okay, if I'm going to sync this down and have it come up, i got to insulate the two wire leads here. The, these, uh, the uh, sockets here, the individual sockets, uh, only go down when they're rotated the right amount. There. wire way back so we don't want very much on there. Hmm. Wrong end. There we go. And we're going to shove that down. This is a larger resistor, it may not get quite as hot. I mean, it still generates the same amount of heat energy because the resistance is the resistance. Down there. But the larger, uh, larger resistor body may uh, throw the heat off more efficiently. Too rough now, Jim. And these fragile. Here it comes. I can feel it coming out the other way. Okay. Now, so it's sticking out there. through right through that's no good wow if there's any insulation left on these wires when I'm done oh my gosh that's no good what's happening there yeah, come on up okay right there sit right there and don't give me any hassles no hassles now this so we're looking at a big one big one two and four Two and four. Really? Is that really two and four? Are those even numbered? Maybe they're numbered inside there. Let's have a little look. Occasionally they number these guys right inside. 
There it is. I see the number. Oh, you know what? I was smart. I cut the wires off so I can see them. Two and four. Two, yep. It all adds up. We have confirmation here. over. Like that. I want to get one of these soldered up. Okay, maybe I can grab the old little piece of wire here. Come on. don't have any strength. <laughs> These ones have no delicateness. Delicateness? Okay, got a hold of it. What am I going to do with it? certainly solder this. Yeah. Okay. Sit right there. Don't go anywhere. Nah. I do have a new soldering iron, but I'm not going to attempt it here because because this is not right place to practice up a new soldering iron. to it. Here it is way up here. Okay, man. Do your thing. <laughs> That's not your thing. You know what? It, it's not you're not supposed to do your thing, you're supposed to do my thing. Do my thing. Do my thing, sit right there. Sit, sit where you want to sit. Thing you. Okay, so I'm gonna. Yeah, I 
only got two hands here. That's what I'm thinking ahead to. Two hands. Okay, so one hand's got to do two things. Absolutely sure here that they don't do something dumb. Now that the pin has to come down, like the thing plugs in through the top, so I can't put this wire where it's going to interfere with the uh, throne. Close, it should be okay for soldering. I get this all done, I'm going to discover the wires are ruined underneath. But at this point, I'm committed to re-insulating them, no matter how bad they get. They got, they are, they were, they will be. Oh, this isn't going to work. No. Okay, you're going to solder it like that. Do the three hands in two trick here. Now, a lot of guitarists do uh, their picking hand. They don't. They hold a pick. They don't. They do. They hold a pick with these two, and then with these two fingers, they're plucking. They're plucking and picking. I can't do any of that. I cannot pluck and pick at the same time. Okay, I think that's good enough there. Sorry if the camera angle doesn't do the trick, but come on. Okay, fasten up there. You can do it. Stay in place. That's terrible. tube in and break the wire, pop the wire right off there. I don't think it's really soldered. Hey, why don't I take a, take a closer look at it. See what we got. As I just get the soldering iron up there, it blocks all the light. I can't see what I'm doing here. There we go. That's got it, I think. That's got it. I think that's got it. 
my gory gosh. The wires have not come apart behind. Down you go. You can get that kind of up, a little high. I can bend it down. So. Okay, you know what, I think I can stick this guy back in. Ooh, should I put that in and then, yeah, you know what, I should, because uh, this will come out easy again later. There it is, it's in there. Shockingly enough, the wires have remained okay, except that one little tiny section. Little tiny section. Which is, because it's all alone, it really isn't a problem. But I will give him just a little bit of tape. Because maybe the wire is sad. I'm not like the other wires. I'd like to be like the other wires. So we'll make him happy here. There we go. Okay, sometimes when you go to put the tape on, all you do is knock off even more insulation. But that seemed to be a particularly bad spot right there. It's probably up against the uh, up against the tube. Okay, you know what we're ready to do here? Should we put it all back together or should we test it? So this is all I'm going to do. Whatever the result is, is the result. So let's put it back together. And clean this guy just a little bit here. my Samson imitation there. There we are. You can see the resistor sticking out the back just a little bit. Uh, and uh, okay, I think we can give it a try. I won't, won't. Why? Why would we not test it? I can't imagine. Well, maybe one reason is we don't have the rectifier tube in. dirty under there. <sighs> this guy's a little dirty too. A hot tube like this, you really want it to be as clean as... Yeah, well, you, you want it to be clean. I think it throws the heat off a lot better. Five Y four. Great big tube. I imagine the bulb is really big on this because of how. Uh, how hot it is. Let's see, it's just pressed right up against these wires here. What can I possibly, and that's why, see the one that, that failed? Right up against the glass. I wish I could put something in there to kind of protect it, but, but the builders of the radio did nothing. Just even a little, just a little out of contact would be much better. There we go. Okay. 
what do we got going here? We got the speaker on, we got the antenna hooked up, we got uh, AM antenna hooked up. We don't have these, that's okay. Audio's working because I got a clip lead connected in the back. Everything is just as it was. Let us try him out. Try him out. Okay. Get around so we can get a good look at the eye. That's a good look at it. Everything okay. Set is off. Let's go like that. Since I just did something, we'll we'll do it with the dim lights. You can see one of them right here. There we go. Okay, no problem there. Let's let's adopt magic eye lighting in the shop. I think I just realized I left my big radio on up here all night. I think I just, I just realized now. It's been up there. I was using that to compare against this. Okay, so first of all, the eye isn't any brighter. Uh, you're getting a terrible reflection. Okay. Okay, full power, full power, full power. Very bright edges, which is kind of neat. Okay, now we're going to tune the radio and we'll watch the action. Better. Well, it's a little better, I think. I think the, the action is better. It looks great on the camera. Like it's really beaming out of there. Beautiful. but it's right at the edge of some interference. Powerful noise interference here. Yeah. I like it. Okay, let's put the light on here so I know what I'm doing. Let's go and check. Let's see, this time of day, the short wave we should get something. You know, we should get something on the 19 meter band. Let's go there. Okay, 19 meters, the band that I thought was kind of dead. Oh, there's that oscillation. Okay, not to worry, because I can still do a alignment deal. I've done so much of this radio. Yeah. Did I mention that? Wow. Okay. Still, <laughs> yeah, still interesting stuff going on there. I guess we're not going to hear any stations. Let's go up even higher with the 16 to 22 megahertz. Just demanding. home there. Let's, we'll go to 25 meter band. That's, that's 11. I think we're pretty likely to get stuff here. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so we'll watch the eye here. Uh, let's do it with a close-up camera. I'm in the dark now. So. <laughs> okay. 
hay un legítimo referéndum constitucional sin garantías de derechos políticos y civiles Anybody want to guess that that's Spanish? Okay, now they're going to do some fading, so you should see the eye moving a bit. Tiny amount. Presidente Trump. You see, it doesn't matter what country you're in, <laughs> the news is all about Mr. Trump. Now tune it. See if we can find something else here. That's a pointer going by. See, that's not even moving it. Very weak signal there. So I think we need another alignment all around. Wouldn't that be fun? And the pointer looks to be on a wild angle there. It's not. Maybe it's just the uh, it's just the way the camera is, is angled. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. See. <laughs> oh. It's just a camera. Just a camera. Don't be fooled. Nobody be fooled here. What happened there? What what? Happened? The radio kind of clicked and went quieter. Band, band switch, wiggling it, no, volume, something, uh, something happened there. Well, it's working anyway. Thank God for Cuba. There'd be almost nothing to hear on shortwave here. Cuba, Radio Marti, and all those crazy American religious broadcasters. Without them, boy, there'd be nothing here during the day, I don't think. Okay. So what's next on this radio? Put it back together, stick it back in the cabinet, do another alignment. I run through the alignment process quickly and get her tuned up on a final basis. I gotta do a little bit of cabinet work today. Hey, great, thanks so much for watching. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. It's not gonna be perfect. You can't make these radios perfect without a superhuman expensive effort. But you can get them pretty close. So thanks again for watching. See you on the next video.